Alright, so first things first, this helm is super comfortable. Um, I can see that the seat's got full adjustability, so I've got a flip up bolster here, two really nice comfortable armrests that feel like you're, you're locked in on the seat and this is a suspension seat so it's it's certainly at the upper end of the quality spectrum that's for sure um, we've just been for a drive we're going to cut to some of the test driving stuff and i'm going to have a drive now and talk to you about the experience but what i did notice before is that we've got a completely dry windscreen we went through some waves we got the bow up in the air we were doing 30 plus knots um, not a drop of water over the bow. In terms of functionality, this thing has got it all. I've got my on-off switches in terms of my battery switches just here down to starboard. So you can literally open the door, sit down at the helm and get going. I've got batteries here. I've got my key start just here. I've got my VHF. I've got an outlet for the air conditioning, which we'll talk about a bit later, stereo, for the speaker, um, a speaker for the stereo I should stay. Throttle is right here and a nice armrest. So if, when you are moving, I feel like this is a boat that you're probably not going to want or need to stand up. Um, we'll see what that's like in a second because the visibility is fantastic. It's super comfortable and with this armrest and your left at hand on the wheel, which is adjustable, you don't really have a need to stand up um, in my opinion. In terms of the dash here, we've got a nice big Simrad display, which is on an angle, so it doesn't ruin your forward visibility, but it's, a, it's set into the, the dash here in such a way that I can see it perfectly well, even with some sun coming across the screen there. I've got my trim tabs just here, compass, nobody uses those anymore, but it's there. Spotlight control here, this is a AUX for the Fusion, you, I'm sure you could Bluetooth it as well. Windscreen wipers, really nice uh, stainless steel backed setup for all your boat switches. And these are flush switches um, and then our anchor operation and bow thruster on port. So we've got a few waves and I think I just saw a seal pop up in front of me so I'll try not to run over you Mr. Seal. Um, we'll go for a bit of a drive. So. This boat's got the 350 horsepower Mercury Verado. Um, you can option it with a higher horsepower if you want. I don't know whether that's necessary, but the option is there. So if that's something you're into, you can do. She's, she's about two tons empty weight, and then add the, add, add the weight of the motor and the fuel to get your total displacement. So you're gonna be about 2628, depending on how you load it. And First thing that's worth talking about, because it is quite a, a standout difference or feature on this boat, is the hull. We've got super deep V. Now that is something that we see on a couple other brands out there at the moment, and it is the appreciation of cutting bow and deep V is well known. But this is military grade aluminium. So for the guy or girl that's looking for a real go anywhere boat, something to pull up on the beach, drag behind your big boat, you know, hoon around the top end with crocodiles in the water and not worry about it, all that sort of thing. Aluminium is often preferred, but aluminium can be quite noisy. So what XO have done is we've got an aluminium hull and a fiberglass top. The fiberglass is all the interior and the top sides. And what I can notice immediately is it's dampening that noise effect, which you often get on aluminiums. It's, it feels like a fiberglass hull, but it's got the strength of aluminium. So let's get her on the plane. So she's popping up, no problems. Quite level in terms of the bow. I don't feel the need to stand up and I'm not a tall guy. I'm just going to reach for the trim and do a little bit of trim there because my crew is on the port side here. And I'm just cruising there at 24, 25 knots. That's comfortable. That's really good. Um, visibility, fantastic. Engines are running 4,000 revs. little bit of chop here 
the boat's just eating it up. So I'm gonna I'm gonna increase speed just a little bit. I'm going through some waves at the moment. There we go. And we'll head over here. So it's it's got that typical deep V effect. It's parting the waves. You really do notice that there is a keel running down the full length of the boat. She wants to track a little bit as we go through those waves. And there's absolutely no aggression to the way the boat's progressing through the water here. If this is not a boat that's gonna beat you up, this is not a boat that's gonna scare your guests, and it's definitely a boat that's gonna keep you comfortable on a day out, because we got the roof open for a bit of ventilation, but I'm not cold. It's one of those change of the season kind of mornings where the temperature is starting to drop. This is fantastic. The boat does have air conditioning, so if it's a hot summer's day and you need or you don't want the hot air coming in through the roof, stick on the air conditioning. You know, you'd obviously need to add some lithium batteries for that, but that is doable on these boats. So I'm just gonna go straight through some of this swell here and I'll drop the nose just a little bit. So this is the great thing about boats like this XO, you know, plenty of plenty of boat tests are done on flat water and they do that deliberately, whereas on an XO or a boat like this, who cares? Now we've got a ferry here, I'm going to go in front of him, so I'm just averaging 25 knots and I'll give it a little bit more. Oh, I can feel that suspension in the seat starting to kick in here. Straight out through the swell. The boat tracks. I feel like you can take your hands off the wheel and it's not going to beat you up. It's not going to spear off into one direction. So we've got a little bit of ocean swell coming through here and what I'm going to do is now take that swell on the starboard beam. I'm doing 28 knots at the moment and now I'm just going to slow it down. Woo! So even that, we've got a little bit of air just there but no funny rattles. The boat feels solid. Okay, now I'm just crossing, crossing the heads there, sitting 25 knots, so I'll just give it another little blast. So I've done all of this driving so far with a little bit of trim tab operation, but full engine down. So what I'm doing now is just trimming the engine up a couple of degrees to see if that makes a difference to the tracking. And I feel like it does. I feel like if you give it just a couple of degrees on engine up. The performance is noticeably better. So we've got less grip of that full deep V keel. It's still giving us the softening effect, but the tracking ability is vastly improved. So that's, that's how I would drive this boat actually. Um, setting the trim, setting the trim for my passengers and my weight load, and then doing a little bit of engine trim up once I'm at 25 knots or more, and you get the full performance out of the boat. Absolutely no need to stand up in this thing. I don't even know if you would even need to do it when you're parking, because the visibility is just fantastic. And it's interesting, I thought, it would have been necessary on this boat because we do have the higher gunnels, um, but it's just not. I, I feel like I'm totally in control and, and nothing's out of my line of sight. And I'll tell you what, if you had guests on the boat and they're up in the bow or moving around, 
they're going to feel a lot more secure with that higher side. And I know the fishermen, they're always asking about higher gunnels, so that's definitely something worth noting. So here we are in the calm water. I'm just going to bring the boat off the plane. And I'll just do some slow speed maneuvering just to see how it feels. Yeah, I do love this throttle position. I, I love this whole, the ergonomics of this setup actually, because this seat moves forward and back. You've got plenty of movement there. I'm 5'7", so there you go. There's my le legs outstretched. And if I were to stand up, that moves up easily. You do feel like you're locked in. Can be done. I think this is completely unnecessary. And for your big blokes, you know, you've got a few inches of headroom there if you're standing, but I just, I don't see the point because it's not increasing your, your visibility all that much because this seat is very high with the suspension. So you already are in a, a, an excellent position visibility wise. Um, if we're maneuvering the boat in close quarters, I can see my wheel on my motor, I should say. That's easy. I'll just give it a little. So she tracks well, tracks really well in reverse. It's predictable. So this is not going to be a difficult boat to park. We've got the thruster there, but I didn't even need that. I think that's down to the fact that we do have quite a nice deep V underneath us. And on that, I didn't discuss it before. What's going on below the waterline is we have an aggressive cutting bow. So the cutting bows, um, are a lot more popular in, in the market these days. And people who want to go offshore, people who want to operate in um, wash affected waterways are always going to appreciate a cutting bow. Um, what it does, when you hit that wave at speed, instead of a, a flared bow, which is going to decelerate and lift and give you a lot more of that up-down action, a cutting bow just parts through the waves and sends the water out to the side. You still do have a little bit of lifting action, but it, it really reduces it. And then if you if you go, start from that cutting bow and move all the way back to a deep V hull, taking it all the way down the back of the boat instead of a flat planing plate, what happens when you do go over those waves, you're just softening the landing effect um, and you, you're avoiding it in most cases or softening it vastly when compared to a boat with a flat planing plate at the back. And that's when you get that really hard jarring, slamming um, that you do experience on some boats. So th this is avoiding all of that. And I think EXO have done a great job in terms of underwater profile. Um, so as I said, I don't see any issues with parking this boat. Um, a lot of people are gonna ask you know, what are my options of getting to the side because it is a full beam cabin? Well, that door and this door provide super good access and the boat's got grab handles all the way around. So I feel like you could quite easily pull it into the dock, grab either those handles or those handles and sort yourself out as a solo operator. I don't see the need to operate this boat with two people. And I tell you what, in the colder climates, this extra space that you get in here is gonna be really valued, whether you're using it as a commuter or a luxury fishing boat, or just a touring around and showing your friends. Imagine this down in Hobart, I could just, it would be fantastic. And in the hotter climates, well, I think we're all sick of the tropical rainstorms, all the skin cancers that we're cutting off our face, etc. Being in a cabin boat's pretty good. Um, we still have the airflow and you can air condition it if you want. So we'll just quickly test out some high speed flat water stuff. We've done the bumpy water. No kayakers around. Don't you love the sound of those motors? So I've, I'm already at 30 knots, 33 and climbing. This is super comfortable. 35 knots, easy. I'm running out of water. 
I could definitely get more, I think, with that motor. So I, I just don't see the need to go more than 350 horsepower because with we got three people on board now, half a tank of fuel. I tell you what, full load, it's gonna go great guns. Look at that, no cavitation, nice hard turn. I do lose a little bit of visibility in the in the steep turn, but I can see through the roof. I'll just pop it into a starboard turn through the wash, no worries. Hook it in. I'm not doing much in the way of engine trim there. And like I said, no need to stand up. This is comfortable. I like this, yeah. Give it some more. Yeah, that's something you always look for in boats. The back end can slip out or you get a bit of cavitation and it can be a little bit unnerving, particularly if you've got grandma sitting on the back. This thing, none of that. Wow, talk about making an entrance. This thing is cool. Alrighty, I think we need to pull up somewhere calm and give you a walkthrough, because I'm excited.